Welcome to the Inside Gaming Podcast, where we talk all about video games. I am Brian, your host. This is the rest of the bunch. After you. I'm Connor. And I'm Evan Campbell at Darth Burrito. I almost forgot what we're talking about today, but you can rest assured I'm excited to be here and to talk about it with I, you folks. I added a few uh, stories just recently uh, because we've we've had a lot. It's been kind of a newsy week. And uh, the first one, the one that I have up top is Crucible shutting down for good. Amazon's it's it's been called its first AAA game. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if that's completely right. There was the Grand Tour. I don't know if that qualifies as AAA, <laughs> but Crucible sort of a mess of a game. Uh, yes, you might remember it, it launched. They took it they took it back into beta, and then they mm-hmm. I guess they just decided you know what, screw it. We we're done. <laughs> but yeah. it, not a great start for Amazon uh, in video games though. No, not not at all. Actually, I'm so glad that you, I'm so glad, Brian, that you've brought up Crucible. It, it has made my day because I was just now working on our feature for this weekend. How about Crucible? <laughs> Amazon's failed everything game. <laughs> just you I, can just transcribe this segment and just use yo, that. Yeah. I'm just gonna play the video file I just yeah. recorded and just duck yeah. out. <laughs> take, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the way to go. It's, I I tried to read the rules to that game, like how it works. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I do not understand. It, it was all took place on one map, and it was Battle Royale, Territory Control, and MOBA, depending on the game mode. MOBA City. I, yeah. I, it's the first game in my memory that's actually been pushed back into beta, at least publicly. That came out, had yeah. this, you know, this is our launch of our game, and then it's like, oh, put that back in the oven. It's not ready yet. Yeah. Yep. It's wild. It's just like... Just like a baby that was born too soon and they just have to put them back. Yep. I mean, there's obviously like the schadenfreude of enjoying a train wreck in real time. Right. Uh, like that's definitely a fun aspect. But the the way I've been going at it and tackling it uh, is, is thinking about what it means for like Amazon, like what their intent was. Like, is it just like quality control or are they just like, you know, course correcting and just deleting it? It's just the best way to move forward. Or is it like, they like is it a first impression thing or is it just that like they're right. maybe not as focused on making games as they were in 2014 right. when they started making this like maybe they saw microsoft bethesda and they're like oh we can just use our money to buy studios yeah well, I, why don't they just do that they're they're trying to just create the studio from the ground up but but so far have they put out anything decent i i i didn't play the grand tour uh, it was supposed I know- to be very bad <laughs> and yeah, I watched, I watched Crucible clips of it. was a it disaster. There was an yeah, esports like, game called Breakaway too, a long time ago, maybe 2014 or 2015. I want to say 2016. Yeah, they had a bra- yeah, and they I mean, had a brawler that they canceled too. So this wasn't the first. Um, it wasn't even the first game they canceled. But uh, yeah, it's just been like so weird uh they bought uh, they bought twitch it's not like they created that from the ground up yeah but twitch had already been running i mean amazon just kind of wrote them a check you know that's what i'm saying breakaway like, was why, the brawler sorry okay okay cool why are, well, like they're doing so much work to build this thing from scratch when they have so such deep pockets right uh, they've got and they're they're making that lumberyard engine or i don't know if it's finished yet but yeah they're yeah, trying pe- to just reinvent the wheel it feels like yeah people are using it and lumberyard is supposed to be like a unity not a unity killer but like a a unity competitor and the idea is also that it leverages almost like cloud gaming development but i think the idea behind it is it is it leverages like the 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 amazon like server networks to like help you build better games somehow uh it's like a lot of the reading i've been doing about it is kind of about that but on also it's free so it's this idea that like come and build games for on, on like our Amazon engine and then we'll help you, you know, distribute that or whatever. Basically what engines usually do will help you make that game. Uh, so Lumberyard is interesting in that way, but it just hasn't picked up like Unity. You know, Unity has been around for years and years now at this point. But yeah, uh, but yeah. even when it first came out, it was like the first like it, it seemed like the little guys like David and Goliath. It, it's, it's the David to Unreal's Goliath, right? Like before that, there was right. only Unreal right. uh, 3, only Unreal Engine. Um, and uh yeah, I think it's been interesting to see Lumberyard, and I think maybe it has some cool elements to it, but it just hasn't caught on at all. 
it, yeah, nothing they've, uh, yeah. It, it may, or were they trying to be epic, like with their own engine, you know, and just kind of, I, I, mm. I don't know. It, it does just feel like they, they've been throwing a lot of money and resources and, and, you know, I, I know the Google Stadia comparison is easy, but it does feel like that. Oh yeah. Uh, Google, Google's getting into making games too, but like, these things take a long time. I mean, what? Yeah, uh, Crucible took four years and it was a complete mess. So it's like all this money and work down the drain. And you do just wonder if they're going to have the stomach for it because at least uh, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, it's like they, they, they're used to this. They've done it before. True, they, yeah. they know when it, you know, how to cancel a project or. You know, so, or like uh, with Metroid Prime 4, just like, you know what? We're going to scrap it. We're going to start over. It wasn't very good. Uh, and, and this is just a whole new ball game that, that Amazon and Google are kind of joining, uh, uh, not late in the game, but, you know, they, they obviously saw an opportunity with streaming and they're trying to, to jump in, but it's both of the, neither of them have gotten it yet. Yeah, it's kind of, I think something that I don't really think about often is that like they're operating at such scale like these are the biggest companies in the world right i mean they own information and retail respectively right <laughs> the, just the concept <laughs> of each of them uh, something patrick said earlier this week but um the, because they are on such a massive like stage and operating at such incredible scale they kind of lose out on the benefit of the doubt of having that runway where like all of a sudden like you yeah. know, Unreal Unreal Engine like has been has had a long journey, you know, from from Unreal Tournament right. and through through Gears and you know up through Fortnite and now as where it is where it is now, it's obviously very established and like Unity been around a long time, and like for Amazon to just be like, and here's our engine and like yeah. it is talked yeah. about and it is financed and it is like seen almost as this competitor immediately just thrown onto the scene, but yeah. it nobody's like paying attention to it yet. It's almost like um. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of like inside baseball, but it's kind of like Adobe Premiere coming onto the scene when everyone was cutting films in Avid. And like, Boom. occasionally you would see like one film cut in Premiere and now a whole bunch of them because they've had a chance to like get that speed up. And I think yeah. that's something that we don't really take into account for these giant companies. Cause it's like, well, you're here, you're, why aren't you just doing it? Yeah, that, it, it feels... that Adobe beef is real. That like that editor cut right there is, is real. I moved to like a very large reputable company, Yahoo actually, was still using Final Cut 7 years after it just been completely discontinued because there yeah, was no yeah. faith in, in Adobe Premiere. Yeah, so it's like it's super apt, yeah. It, it feels like Amazon and Google both decided, well, we've got all this cloud infrastructure. We can we have the 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 technology to do this. So like I it's like they assumed they would they would be good at it. it it's like to use a sports analogy, it feels like they both built giant stadiums, but mm. then they didn't think about the team at all and just sort of expected that like a championship baseball team would just sort of spring up almost or not that well, they aren't if, putting work into game development. They are, but, but it, it just feels like they, they, uh, uh, I, it's not that they got it backwards. I mean, the tech works. I mean, Google Stadia, when it works, it's pretty cool, but th there's just, but they forgot about games. Yeah, just maybe the most important part of gaming. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, wait, we we built the stadium. We forgot to buy a baseball team. Or like, so I made it a game we'll that, yeah. 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 And so it, they it decided really to bad. start training a bunch of 10 year olds to play. Also, like, zero, like, it feels like there should be more competition between these companies to make better products for us, but they're operating with so much, you know, so little risk because like their overhead right. is like nothing compared to their revenues and to their to their cash. So like it's kind of oh, just yeah. like it it to, to continue your analogy, it's like the Rams and the Chargers coming to LA. It's just like <laughs> did yeah. none of did neither of you think about what this means for like a fan in this city? Like and this nobody, is not yeah. needed. <laughs> no one was asking for this. Especially team, for like fine. the Chargers. Like the Chargers that's San, Diego's from San Diego team. Like even people in LA were like, we don't want this. <laughs> neither did people in San Diego though, which I think was <laughs> Yeah, nobody kind of true, the but it, I, and I don't know a ton of, you know, uh, sorry, not to get off the rails, but to me, L.A. has always been about the Lakers and the Dodgers. Like, that's, yes, that's absolutely. <laughs> and and I guess the Rams, if you had to pick a team, I guess I mean, <laughs> the NFL, they had some, his, they had some oh. history. there. Yeah. But it, it, it is just a weird uh, um, 
I, I don't know. There's just clearly been growing pains. Hello, Alana. Alana hey, is here. Hey. Yeah, we're sorry, you guys. Football. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. We're talking about sports. Should I leave? <laughs> <laughs> no, please stay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just running. A, we were just running an analogy into the ground. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, getting back to Amazon, it it it's going to be. They haven't announced a date for Luna yet. Um, that'll be interesting, especially just the sort of the concept of you can play on any device you want. I think that's what Stadia really needed. Um, and and I know Microsoft's trying to like get X Cloud on iOS too, but it'll it'll be cool to see once that uh, once Luna launches, like what will differentiate it, if if anything. It's something I to me. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Connor. I was just gonna say I thought I saw something about how you can through browser now get X Cloud on iOS devices, or you will be able to. Or They're something. working on some workaround. Yeah, yeah. The boys in the lab are cooking something. <laughs> the, the That's right. Browser based system is like the way to go, or browser like accessibility is the way to, to circumvent the Apple Store for sure, or the App Store. Um, but I think a lot of the decisions that Amazon has made come to me as like top level, like people with money looking at the games industry as a, like a place with a lot of money. So like you think about like the Crucible, how it's built around like the aspect of a MOBA, which League of Legends is obviously one of the most profitable games around. Um, I mean, they could have gone like the Minecraft way, but I, I don't know if they want that to be a direct competitor or maybe that game seemed like harder to make or something. But yeah, like these types of games that they've decided to make have been like esports driven. They've been like multiplayer yeah. driven and it's probably free to because, play yeah. yeah and it's probably because the top level amazon people are like what are the biggest games you know like it's league of legends yeah. it's dota yeah. it's call of duty it's a battle royale right like so we need to do that but like to combine all of those things together and we'll make the most ultimate like money game that ever existed uh that generates right. the most ultimate money game that's so money dude <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the money the ultimate money game they should just call it that yeah. that would have been cooler <laughs> i don't know um well, Alana, did you play Crucible? Because I know you actually play video games. I did play Crucible. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, so Crucible is a really interesting one in that I found it. Um, it it basically just sold itself wrong. It's a MOBA, but was pretending to be a hero shooter. Uh, but once we'd like picked the characters that we liked, uh, I enjoyed playing it and thought it was pretty. It's just that it didn't do anything new for that genre whatsoever. Again, pretended to be a hero shooter, which means everyone feels misled, um, but also mm. just didn't do enough to stand out. It's not that it was broken and terrible, because, yeah, by the end of playing it for probably even an hour, I, I enjoyed it. It just, it's hard to compete in that space anyway, uh, because the juggernauts there are so juggernauty. Right, you could just play Battleborn. Or <laughs> you could just play Battleborn. <laughs> yeah, that's <a> <laughs> <laughs> or lawbreakers, come on! Yeah, well, lawbreakers. Oh, There's man. just a lot of competition. Paragon. They yeah, did so take. It wasn't terrible, but I'm not surprised this happened. <laughs> they did take the weird tack of releasing it with zero marketing too, <laughs> and, and it just I feel like yeah, some so maybe some explanation about what the game was and what and and sort of how to play it and how to approach it might have helped, or maybe not. I don't know, but but they could have at least I don't know thrown some streamers some money and. I mean, it tells me that they knew. I, yeah, I yeah. I feel like one telling anecdote yeah. here is like I, I cornered Rami Ismail once to ask him about like indie game development. And I was like, hey, yes, like even at the indie indie level, I was like, hey, That's if I had like I a ask, budget yeah. to spend like money on making a game, let's say I came into like twenty or thirty thousand dollars, the thing he told me was like, take half of it and set it aside and spend it on marketing marketing and yeah. use the other half for actual development. I was like, oh whoa. Like I didn't even That's know. what films do. They yeah. spend like as much as the budget. On yeah, Burger King tie-ins, and so like that, a exactly. larger company wouldn't have that kind of mindset, or I don't know. It just who knows? Like the way like Google and Amazon launches well, things, like a complete they're using Twitch problem. to market New World. Yeah. <laughs> like yes, and it's doing pretty well on Twitch. Yeah, that seems to be the the going. They're apparently I've read that they've given some streamers up to like a hundred codes just to give out. Yeah. Whoa. It's too many codes. Nobody can. Too many codes. codes. Yeah, it's too, it's many too codes. many people. Too many people. I would just be, I would be super so heavy handed and be like, <laughs> they should just be like, no, all of you must stream New World tomorrow. You have yeah, nothing else. I mean, they they could in theory, yeah, they right? Could do like, that, yeah. <laughs> it would piss everybody Full off. But it would be funny. They yeah. could do it, and you all have to play this U two album while you do it. <laughs> That's right. It's the only um, music allowed. <laughs> That's funny. That so funny. Um, all right. Well, speaking of uh, game companies, Microsoft apparently cut a deal with GameStop 
Uh, this was just out uh, very recently. So GameStop, according to this deal, is going to earn revenue on any digital content that is purchased on an Xbox Series X or an S. So if you buy a Series X from GameStop and then you you, you get your Cyberpunk, you get a digital uh, uh, Cold War, they get a cut of that revenue. Very, very interesting. Um, oh, I, I don't understand. That's what it was. Yeah, they... I, so, huh, it's kind of like residuals for being yeah, the kind of. that sold the console. This is yeah. wild. And it's, yeah. I guess it's just stuck to, the, it's not a user account, it's stuck to that machine. Like if you sell that to somebody else. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. But it does seem to incentivize GameStop to sell Xboxes <laughs> over I mean, other, it's, other I, things now. I love dunking on GameStop, but like bringing a brick and mortar store into the fold with digital sales is like a good thing as far as I'm concerned, right? <laughs> I mean, like. It's, it, it's I, you know, only online is like, I feel like not the way to go. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel hardware. like they need something like this to survive. And, and I think it's for Microsoft, it's good. It maybe it's, it does incentivize GameStop to push Xboxes more. But also so, digital sales. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is confusing. It's that is really a little confusing. Strange. Maybe it's kind of just accepting their fate. It's like, well. <laughs> Oops, I think you have have figured to. this out. Yeah, sooner. at some point they have to do something, right? I mean, so just Fortnite toys and Xboxes then. <laughs> and how right. does this cut work? Does it mean Microsoft is taking less of a cut? Right. Like I just don't understand. It's very odd. And how? But it, is it just a little cut? Do they get you know five percent? Do they get two percent? Right. You know, yeah, uh, eighty percent. The, like one paragraph in the story explains, if you buy an Xbox Series X from GameStop, for example, and then proceed to download a digital copy of Cyberpunk 2077 or Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, GameStop will get a cut of the revenue you generate, which is just yeah, so kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. And then right. does that go to movies? Does that go to like anything you buy on your console? And then they, like, they, how yeah, are they, they sort of this? speculate that the same goes for, uh, potentially or in theory for movies or, or DLC and stuff like that. Buying hmm. stupid emotes for my characters in any game that I'm only going to play once. Yeah, my actions, and then you know this has UV to store. benefit someone, right? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like I get that it benefits GameStop. GameStop, yes, uh, yeah. but I yep. am unclear on how it benefits Xbox. I think um, I, I I think that uh, to me it's acknowledging there's still a lot of game stops out there and it's and it uh, maybe this makes them push our Xbox over over the PS5. I, that's I guess. Just a guess. I don't know. I'd be curious what game what the market looks like in more rural areas where like the bandwidth to download a game is like not realistic. Like it would be a week. But I mean, I guess you still have to download mm. stuff anyway. That's just you do issues in this country. Okay, never mind. It's Bad just thought. very confusing Stupid. to me Stupid because Connor. I feel like this is counter to them pushing Game Pass, or maybe that's the point: is that they don't care because they have Game Pass. That they're like, if you want to buy a game for a full sixty dollars, we get. I just don't understand why Xbox has done this. I'm very confused. Yeah. Maybe it's something to do with the relationship between the retailers and the distributor. So like Xbox wants to have that better relationship because in, like Brian kind of said, you need the retailers to sell your hardware to you open up your platform to more uh, to that like console demographic, basically to get them into Game Pass. So maybe there's something there. I don't know that we just can't can't I, see in the business side. Like, I don't know. You know, something we're not taking into account is some really high level politics. This might be Reggie fils might have made an embarrassing picture of Phil Spencer. Mm. Go away. Oh, <laughs> and now, nice. you know, Philly's, Philly's got to be good and he's got to cut in GameStop for a little there bit of the go. chunk of the change. You know, that Connor, the smart, uh, that Connor brain. It'll mm. get you across mm. the finish line. Case a solved. good point. Yeah, that's got to <laughs> be All right, it. well, we figured it out. Figure uh, it move out. on. Next story. <laughs> Picture of SpongeBob at the Christmas party. I feel like I maybe need to, to like, read up on it more because this is the first I'd even heard of the story. It's literally right now. Um, yeah. You're learning, maybe, you're learning along with the, the viewers. Yeah, maybe GameStop is is just bigger than, than I had given them credit for. And it's, yeah, it is some kind of push to make them sell more X. But then I feel like the, the Microsoft strategy this generation isn't to sell Xboxes. It's to sell Game Pass. So right. I don't know. Maybe they they don't still want to sell boxes. Maybe it's, they still want to sell Yeah. Shows. yeah. The show of good faith is like worth the, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. Um, yeah. They also released uh, a people, list man. of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Inside. They game, also released you don't know. 30 games that are optimized for the Xbox Series X. Yes. S. Mm. Um, pretty much what you would think. Um, yeah, uh, your Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Borderlands 3, Dead by Daylight, Devil May Cry 5, mm-hmm. Dirt 5, uh, Fortnite. Oh, thank God. Uh, Forza <laughs> Horizon 4. Gears 5, Gears Tactics. I'm, I'm just sort of hitting the highlights. Uh, grounded yeah. NBA 2K1, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Planet Coaster, War, War Hammer, War Thunder, Warf ham- not, to be, Hammer. not to be confused, Watch Dogs Legion, Yakuza Like a Dragon. So cool. about, what you, about what you'd expect right now. A lot of them are uh, uh, smart delivery also. I Have forgot we- Watch Dogs Legion comes out in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> kind of snuck up on me. Super weird. Um, yeah, no yeah, one's talking I, about it. But I, I don't feel like people are really talking about Assassin's Creed very much right now either, strangely. They just released um, yeah. stuff yesterday, like the dog petting and cat petting. I like that that Twitter yeah. account, Can You Pet the Dog, has single-handedly shifted game development. <laughs> it's like yeah. forced everyone like every, to add that feature. Like, I yes, think you can pet the foxes and Ghost of Tsushima there. in the multiplayer too. Yeah, you yeah. Can, yeah. and you can, pet, you can pet Cerberus mm-hmm. in, uh, in Hades. Well, honestly, yes. it's a movement that should have happened much sooner. You know, you're making a game; yeah. it's got a dog, long overdue in the industry. Definitely, yeah, yeah. A, yeah a we shouldn't be spot. applauding them for something that they should have already been doing. <laughs> the bare minimum. Yeah, it's like just being kind. Um, Ooh, can you yeah, so I've been getting regular updates, obviously, because I have my Series X. I could pull it up for the sake of the podcast. Let's see it. Let's like. see it. All right. Um, <laughs> and uh, podcast listeners are so screaming right now. Ooh, She's, oh, it's a box. Ooh, there it is. It's a box. Um, can I see that green in the vent? Green in the vent. On the top. Oh, I oh. love that it's actually oh. there. I thought it. I thought it was going to be like a light or something. It's, it is or way cooler effect. than it has any right to look. <laughs> oh, so it's um, just painted on the sides of the vent. Yeah, but it holes. it still shows up really well. It that does is look like a light. Wonderful. I'm what such I was a big fan is, of green. Me too. Yeah, I can, green, t- I can tell. Green <laughs> fake LEDs. I love green. Um, I've been getting uh, frequent updates from Xbox about which games are compatible at what times, and I guess Gears Five was maybe. Made compatible to yesterday. Forza Horizon 4 isn't yet, but that's because it is only available as the optimized version, um, which I think is applies differently for different games, basically. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they're, like, slowly rolling out the updates and what's compatible so that everything will be backwards compatible by launch, um, just bit by bit, basically. Okay. Yeah, I just booted more... up... Uh, I've, been playing, I've been playing Forza on my PC or streaming it from my PC for months and months now, and I just booted it up on my Xbox One S for the first time in, like, six months, and... Holy cow! The difference is absurd. Just in the reflections mm. off the car, I was like, "Wow!" I did not realize how much better this looked. So, that optimization cannot come soon enough. And those Forza yeah. games, I always think that whenever a new one comes out, I always think it can't look any more realistic than this. <laughs> like, this is so pretty. And then, and then by the next one, it's like, "Holy crap!" That last one looked like shit compared to this. <laughs> I've seen Forza screenshots that I'm like, "That's an image. That's a, that yeah, is a exactly. picture you have taken of a right. car." That's right. just a car, not, yeah. Just a car. I mean, MKBHD just played it in 8K. <laughs> it's Jeez. nuts. There's some crazy stuff about Forza as well, where um, I've spoken to their dev, te- dev teams a number of times over the years, and I know one thing that's consistent, especially with the motorsport series, uh, rather than Horizon, is that they have to add faults to the cars to make humans believe that they're real. To make them look more realistic, you have to intentionally oh. add flaws. Like even if it's like a little fingerprint or a smudge or like a little scratch or yeah. something. Otherwise, our brains will be like, nope, fake. So they Not have to yeah, make them look worse in order for us to believe that they're real, which is just oh. nothing can look so that cool. beautiful. I mean, that's yeah. why I look so disheveled in dailies. I mean, exactly. you wouldn't really be able to believe my just radiant. The symmetry of my face is unbelievable. If you if saw I, the real Connor, just, you'd be like, they're a doll. It's not, that's a uh, Yeah, porcelain. See, this is no a hologram pores. speaking to me. <laughs> yes. Just, just crystal white. Like, sh- one of those like fake influencers that I've been reading so much about. <gasps> oh, VTuber. Yeah. Yeah. No, so not funny. VTuber. Oh. I mean like the uh, the fake, like the computer generated influencers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. That's legitimately a thing. They're not even real. People <laughs> yeah. follow them. Like this it's... one's from League. This great headline from Vice. League of Legends fake anime pop star is sad tweeting about genocide. Oh, like a member of KDA? <laughs> KDA. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, this my is God. So this is, yeah, sad. this is Serafina. Serafina. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. It's, yeah, it's super spooky. There was a video of one of them that was, like, talking about, like, 
like a bad experience in an Uber and it's like, you aren't real. <laughs> ah! Yeah, but can we give a shout out to Bobby? Have you guys seen the content Bobby, Bobby makes? Barbie, sorry. Accent. Oh. Barbie. Um, Barbie. B- Bobby <laughs> makes like these really good vlogs about like really frequently, like genuine looking vlogs to camera. It's crazy shit. We like, have, right, I have seen some I of that. Yeah. You are melting my brain right now. I definitely do not want to watch a vlog that Barbie made. Or but don't the thing is you do because they're really good. Like Bobby's vlogs are wholesome and like informative that there was the most recent one that i saw was like about her saying that women apologize too much and i yeah, was like there was Damn, another okay, one with the frank com- there was a frank conversation on race with between two barbies i did see that one and i was like oh yeah <laughs> but i don't th- i don't think that i don't think that is like a Bobby fake. addresses white privilege on her youtube channel i thought it was like a clip from a show that is what like- we need right now so okay. YouTube channel, that's crazy. Okay. God, Barbie so. talks right, about how hard it is to be a blonde white lady. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we need nope. for more blonde white ladies. <laughs> Barbie is speaking truth to power on why pants don't fit because her waist is too small. <laughs> Ken, Ken comes in and mansplains politics to her. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So, speaking of next generation yes. consoles, the PlayStation 5, we got a look at the UI. Uh, today, well, we're recording this Thursday, so th- that was a. Um, I-, I thought it looked really cool. I mean, there was a, they've clearly like done a lot of revamping of it, but the card system looks very cool, and the the whole activities thing that lets you kind of jump into different points of a game and do challenges, and um, I don't know, it just and and the the chat feature and and the way. Uh, it, it's just a lot more integrated into the game. You, like you don't have to like pause your game and go to a different screen to chat with people, and you can pull up hints and pull just put that screen right alongside the game you're playing. It looks really awesome. So like, sleek. They, yeah, it, it is so sleek. Those rounded edges. That's think, a hallmark oh, of the future. I think a lot of people have been coming out in anger. Like some people just dunking on this thing, but I think it looks really cool. Like I'm into I thought it. it looked cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it looks. I think it looks fine. Uh, oh. I've oh, been going yeah. back. And getting, I think the uh, cards are stupid. Really? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to use them. Uh, They're just going to kind of fade uh, into the background. You're going to once in a while like, going to go, oh, yeah, yeah. Those. yeah. <laughs> well, Although it seems I like, like the, a way to get some extra juice out of your game, though. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if yeah. you finish, then you can. I, don't know. I mean, Xbox good. has had those for a while um, with like achievement track, is where you can pin a certain achievement uh, yeah. to mm-hmm. your game and like track it, which I actually, as a person who like cares about trophies and achievements, do use those, but I doubt majority of people do. I don't even mean the activities specifically. I mean like the card that like takes you to a certain level in the game. So removing boundaries and it's like, well, shouldn't the game be pretty good at letting you get into the game? Like, I feel <laughs> yeah. like how much is our it developers be gonna fun to play. use True. this? I, I like, my, my, the stuff I like is that it's not really invasive to your experience when you wanna go join a party or watch somebody else's gameplay or take a screenshot. It seems to really be folded into kind of less of a complete shift and more of an overlay, which I like. I think that's a really great way to use the experience and kind of center what you're playing or watching. Yeah, I really like the, really? where you can watch like a friend or, or somebody in your party's like gameplay, like they could just stream it right to yeah. you. So yep. if like, you know, my brother's playing Minecraft or whatever and I'm playing like whatever the next, like Assassin's Creed or something, cause I wanna get through the campaign for work or something or whatever, like I can still like hang out with him and watch what he's playing and he's like, oh, I'm stuck right here. Like I don't know what to do. You can like give somebody like hints. It's like a different way to hang out while playing different games, which I think it kind of already happens with like Discord and stuff. But I think now it's like even cooler that you could just like check in on their video and just like picture and picture it on your screen. Xbox One also had similar features for, I forget, gosh, I forget what like the buzzword term is for it. Snap? Yeah, snap. And then they kind of just they, snap they ditched it, right? Yes. Yeah, all the snapping. Snaps. Yeah, the snap. Oh, wait, no, I'm or thinking snaps. of Doom. It's snap. It's no, it was, it was, it was Doom or Quake that was like snap maps. Snap, snap maps. Snap maps was snap Doom. Map. Yeah. Hey, snap maps. Snap maps. Snap maps. Snap maps. Snap <laughs> Did you play the Doom? <laughs> yes, I love Mammar. Uh Yes, but you're right. In this instant, it is snapping, which. Is that one of the yes. features that they walked back with the, with the Xbox One X? No, it's, it I like, feel like it's maybe not. So and then it's, it's interesting to see PS5 like take it up and see if they can make it work. I think what's really mm-hmm. kind of perplexing for me and interesting is like the idea that there's all of these videos to help you through sections of games. Like, where are those videos coming from? 
who's making them? Like, is it right. up to the developer now yeah. to like find these trouble spots and make these videos for them? Or are they going to link out to like GameSpot or like, uh, I can't think of another good guide channel. I know moment, of but. games that have done that before. I've had friends who worked at EA who basically like they just put it on the comms team internally to make uh, help videos it was specifically for a series of mobile games, I believe, where okay. they were like, yep, uh, we want to make these videos that would go in this slot. And I think it was it was related to Maker because Maker had a video platform. Um, and oh they had a partnership, so it was this whole thing. And they were like, okay, you want to put videos in this spot, who's making the videos? And they were like, you. And they're like, uh, uh, I can't edit. Who's editing? They're like, you will learn to edit. So I guess it just ended up being somebody's job as a throwaway yeah. that they would have to make these yeah. videos. Oh, and that's man. People sort of what consider... I feel like will happen here. P video is so ubiquitous these days that people are just like, we'll just put video there. We'll just do video. And it's like, you know, that's like a tremendous amount of work and know how There's, to get to Like, <laughs> like right. in, um, I think it was Battlefield 5, there were guide videos or, or more like overview of like a certain game mode and they looked like shit. I'm I'm not just saying like they were poorly made. I mean they were poorly exported, like super mm. grainy and blocky, and like clearly just the the wrong export settings. And yet these file these video files were just like pfft, just put in the game, and I'm just like this looks terrible. This makes the game look bad. Why right. did you it's, include this? EA? Right. It's people's whole job to edit videos and make them look nice, as we know. Oh my but, damn I think recognition! It's like a, someone in PR being like, you could. You could edit that, right? You know totally. how to do that. Yep. Communications oh, yeah. guy, you could do that, right? Yeah. No. Like, you, have a, you have a communications degree, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah like <laughs> you said, it, it feels like a thing they just pile on to like, like the community manager or somebody who already yeah, is like, totally. just completely yeah. swamped mm -hmm. with, with stuff. And it's like, well, just figure this out because this is deals with our community. So it's like, right. yeah, I, I don't know where those videos are coming from. And, and I think it is a big deal if, if they do like partner with other YouTube channels and people who make guides like that, that is like, uh, a legitimate source of income for a lot of people just making game guides and, and uh, like strategy guides, basically video versions of it, because people are doing that on their phone anyway. A lot of the times, if they're they're trophy it's, hunting or achievement hunting and trying to find that stuff, like it's, it, it, yeah. And if you you break down the wall, you make it easier to do that within the console. I think that is kind of a cool thing, but I don't know how it benefits like PlayStation or Sony really directly. It does seem easier said than done, and yeah, I mean it. it you know. Uh, you got to keep in mind a lot of these features get touted at the beginning, but then once the system releases, uh, sometimes they fade into the background or, or they never fully materialized. Uh, yeah, unless it's some sort of crowdsourced thing where they're like incorporating, you know, yeah, footage from YouTube or something. That, but I, I, it seems like an incredible amount of work uh, to put in all these hint videos. But and, and hope that they've figured it out ahead of time yeah. and have hired people appropriately. Surely. But it might just be a first party game know. thing. Like right. yeah. Yeah. something that yeah. we don't see anywhere on the console generation. And then a game is coming out in 2025 and it's like, remember these? Like when um, <laughs> like when The Last of Us is like, use the, shake the controller to turn your light back on and touch the touchpad <laughs> to strum the guitar. And it's like, oh, I remember this stuff from Infamous Second Son. Right, yes, yeah. the gimmicks yeah. that yeah. PlayStation right. is still right. making its first parties right. uh, studios do. I did count yeah. the number of times Sid Schumann in that that uh, walkthrough video said some of titles will include this feature. <laughs> and it was yeah. like 50. He said that a lot of times. I, I, Zach, Zach had a good point on the daily today. Sorry, Brian, I cut you off. No, go ahead. Okay, okay. It was just about like, yeah, if you want to show where a little item is in, in Sackboy Adventure or whatever, that's something you can just show in a video. But like, if it comes down to like the meta of like Hades and like which attributes you want to like, it's kind of like, at a certain point, you're going to have to just like turn to your phone and just Google it. Right. And right. Right. To, to me, that stuff, I, I, I enjoy that. That's like the best use of YouTube because there's almost almost every question has been answered by some enterprising YouTuber on, on whatever game you're playing. They'll show you the right loadouts. They'll show you how to get through a place. I don't know. I maybe that's just old fashioned of me to look want to look things up on YouTube. But, yeah, it does seem. I, I don't know. It, it seems like it's still going to be a lot easier to do that than whatever this is. But I, I could be wrong. I will say that uh, as a feature, like in video, talking about like integrating video and video games, uh, like Blizzard, 
the launcher has like a news page and League of Legends also has like a front page when people boot up the game. And if yeah. you get on there, it's like it's like a views goldmine. Like you, it, it, there are a lot of people trafficking through there and it's basically anybody who turns on the game is gonna get served that content. So if you can yeah. make it into yeah. the front page and Blizzard does this sometimes, especially with like their esports stuff, they will publish. They do that with Hearthstone a lot exactly, too. Exactly, yeah. yeah, they will publish news stories and content to the front and that will just like, it's like an instant like, like a master key to like SEO. Like your video is just gonna, or your content is just gonna fly through the roof with, with views oh, and yeah. stuff. So I, I could see it, I don't know if it's gonna work the same way in this instance because you're, you're dialing it down to like smaller game communities and people watching the, those videos or consuming that content in that way but it is like a weird line I think like something we haven't really dealt with before in, in this way at least it's, it's interesting. something phones do I mean you know like that like kind of Apple hub or like there's the Google sidebar and it's like here's all this news stories and stuff we, we've curated this and it's the, the stuff that you want to check out and it's like I'm actually just going to open Instagram, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, I yeah, used to do so that. many news apps like that. Yeah, we'll 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 uh, sort of tailor the stuff to you, and it's like uh, I'm just gonna end up going to the New York Times. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good and I, like yeah, I'm gonna go to the the paper I like. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Twitter and just check the news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But thank um, you, Apple. <laughs> thank let's you move so on. Let's move on. The Oculus Quest Two. There's been some drama, Connor. I was gonna ask you about this. Have you had any problems with your Facebook? Uh, account because um, <laughs> there have been some reports out there. I'm actually that the account in the, so I can't do the podcast yeah, cool. anymore. Oh, wow. Show I off. I any issues, but I've read about them. Were you just yeah, in VR been... right now? That was impressive. Yeah, I'm actually not even here. I'm like, a, <laughs> I'm like Hatsune Miku. I knew it. <laughs> You're all like you. Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, some people trying to reactivate their old accounts uh, to use their Quest 2 uh, have reported getting suspended um, mm -hmm. or they can't create a new account because maybe there's like Facebook still has like a copy of the old mm -hmm. one and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you're trying to impersonate someone. So, um, yeah. And then there, there's a review process involved. I don't know. It sounds like a friggin' mess. And Facebook it is, is a real quagmire. And this is why people <laughs> didn't want it integrated with Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... I didn't realize that Facebook actually, to verify your uh, information, Patrick told me this, will ask for your ID to be uploaded. Facebook, yes. which is famously like a photo extremely ID. bad with data. Photo yeah. ID, right. yes. And this is this is the Facebook that you know sold data to Cambridge Analytica. This is the Facebook that uh, stores yeah. things that it says it doesn't store. This is you know a terrible company. And on top of that, I've been reading about people that tried to reactivate an old account. Then it got suspended after uploading their ID, and then all of their games that they had bought through Ocu their existing Oculus account wiped. And when they tried Please. to appeal it, Facebook responded with something along the lines of, this matter has been basically put to, put to bed. We will not be reopening this. You are banned. <laughs> and it's just like, there's Jesus. no like, I know what it's how frustrating it is when the avenues to go through customer support are all automated and you've exhausted them and you just keep getting run around in circles. like. I'm trying to cancel a magazine subscription and the online portal isn't working, so I emailed them and they sent me a link and they were like, just go to this online portal and cancel. And I'm like, that's what I'm trying <laughs> to do. just look up my account right now and cancel yes. it. So, yeah. so that's that's kind of the, the vibe I've been getting. I'm Listen, I'm not happy about the Facebook stuff. I wanted to delete my account and right. now I need it. Although maybe that'll be detached. I mean, but. how real does that account have to be? I think when Amir and I talked about it, one yeah. point, like, oh yeah, I guess I'm going to have to build a burner Facebook account. A just dummy have... Facebook account. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they'll, I think they'll check between the names. I, I think but, some, they get scrubbed semi regularly I had, a, I had uh, a burner account for when I worked at Machinima and on the Facebook account, uh, page. So I had to have an account attached to it. And it was like pulling teeth getting it set up. I remember that it was it was very hard because it, like it must have like known devices that were previously attached to my other Facebook account. They like we know what you're doing. Colin. Or yeah, they could yeah, make it hard yeah. to switch between those accounts. You know, like I mean, Twitter yeah, makes just it setting it up, easy, verifying but, it, it was like yeah. pulling teeth. I mean, Facebook is just maybe one of the worst companies out there, just hands down. Agreed. And I can, yeah. and I can totally see them in uh, six months. Like Facebook apologizes after 50 million drivers' licenses got leaked onto. <laughs> The fucking dark web, like that's uh, this this shit happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. there's no way you would want to give them your ID. 
I wonder no. how that works for someone like me who's like, look, I love my Oculus. I use it almost every day. Like, I really love the Rift. Um, or Quest, rather, sorry. Um, I love that tech, and it was a bummer when it got bought out by Facebook. But if I'm trying to put in my ID and it registers that my location is the US, but my ID is Australian, yeah, it might just not work. That's not even like a question you, you should have to ask your to play video games. That's so frustrating. Yeah, it's it's super frustrating. And also, like, you have to use a phone to set it up. You can't do it in the headset, which mm. like is mm. a, is like kind of a big ask when you're doing VR because you're just like. Okay, and you just got this. It's just unwieldy. Like you should be able to do things inside the headset if you're going to be putting on a headset. Yeah, right. That's a, that's right. a different qualm. But like it's it just kind of goes to show that they haven't really thought through the whole user experience here. Well, or it's intentional because they want you to associate it as a partnership with your phone and thus a partnership with your Facebook app. I it guess could, so. Yeah, but I don't have a strategy. the Facebook app. So but like, you should, Connor. Have you I thought should, about I getting the Facebook app? <laughs> I it's can't believe I've been going through you. life without the Facebook app. You need it. It's not also, up like, to you. You can't use a username, I don't think, like an Oculus username. So you have to use like your Facebook name. Oh, my and it's, God. like reads it yeah. out. And you can hide it from other people. But like there's people that don't go by the same name they have on Facebook. Which, right. That's like a weird, rigid, restrictive, archaic thing. And it's just like let people just like go by whatever they want to in this virtual world. It's like you're tethering this whole like means of escape to one of the most tedious parts of real life. It's just Having like- Having username <laughs> literally everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really, really frustrating the way they've yeah. gone about this. And Step I didn't into fully this grasp. futuristic landscape, but we will need your real name, your Facebook account, yes. and your driver's license. Yes. Yes. Your, dry, your yeah. birth certificate, yep. your social security number. Yep. Your mother's yeah. maiden name. What was your mother's maiden name? Yes. What was your first Last job? Last three was your pay first stubs. Your car? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, that aside, I've heard the quest too from like you, Connor, and others that it's great. It seems but awesome. It's, it's yeah. awesome. It's very cool. I, listen, I love it. I don't regret my purchase at all. Not at all. I just really wish it weren't attached to Facebook. Yeah. But I mean, like yeah. at the end of the day, it's just like I've got fucking Google Homes here, and they're always listening to me. So <laughs> there you go. Kind of sold yeah. myself down the river. At some point, you have to get in. it. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I just, you know what. Quest no, is I never so leave good. my apartment, and I was like, I want to have it. This is my this is my uh, decision rather than getting a next gen console in 2020. Oh, was to get the headset. I respect that. There's zero. There's like no overlap with my PC. Whereas getting an Xbox or a PS5, a lot of overlap with my PC. That's true. Yeah, good point. Um, moving on. Speaking of next gen games or next next gen games, Star Citizen celebrated eight years of development uh, recently, another delay. The, this specifically, uh, the, the multiplayer part is in like a very, very early alpha, but the Squadron 42, the single player campaign, they announced basically just, yeah, we, it's, not, it's not anywhere close to being, but it, it, even in beta, and we don't know when it is. So, so cool. it, Chris Roberts <laughs> seemed like annoyed and, uh, basically, just look. This is really hard stuff we're doing, so just kind of <laughs> leave us alone. Star Citizen celebrates eight years of delays and being rich. <laughs> shockingly. Yes, Robert, Roberts in the AMA they did on their website or their forum is just like comes off as just the most like, just like the biggest prick in the world. Very, I don't know very even, cocky I don't know if that's the to case, say the least. But, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. it was very actually like actually we are communicating a lot, and you should be lucky that we're telling you yeah. anything saying like it'll come out it's done when it's done is just the most like pig-headed thing to say to people that have given you thousands of dollars for no return it used yep. to be the badass thing to say if you were blizzard though so it's funny how this I, the presentation yeah but they it. don't take money in the same way right 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 right, yeah. <laughs> right. Like 60 yeah. bucks yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was like there was a quote where they were like 2020 has been our best year in terms of revenue it's like revenue you don't have a product it's raised well over $300 million, uh, uh, probably closer to four at this point. But um, it, it, it is just the the craziest thing. I, I feel like I, I, I feel like one day it's all going to come crashing down because I feel like it can't go on just forever, just bringing in more and more money. But they are. I mean, they have they have figured out this niche and this group of people that will just give them unlimited amounts of money forever. I don't know, and, Brian, and have you seen this YouTube page? These videos look pretty good. They Star look awesome. Star Citizen I'm, YouTube is, uh, 
quite popular area i did not know what they've shown looks cool i mean it does and and they'll they will release these communiques that are like an hour and a half of a bunch of developers from the uk just going on and on and (laughs) on but it just gets so grand but then you don't you never know like when when is the damn thing coming out when when is it well when it's done brian that's none of your business yeah he compared it to the moon landing i mean come like a couple of missteps here yeah one yeah. one big misstep for for man? I don't know. Like, I don't know how to do it. We, you know, guys, we knew what you meant. A couple do dogs have died in the process, but we are <laughs> plugging along. Do you guys think these games will ever come out? Like, do you think there's an end to a light at the end of this tunnel? I think I saw a funny joke in our comments was like, don't they know that like early access exists and patches and yeah, that sort of thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, there is a way to do this with wall. Ha- and, and there are playable aspects of that. Not Squadron 42, yes. I don't think, but uh, Persistent like universe. regular yeah. Star Citizen. There are playable elements. You can go in there and play the game to an extent. Um, you know, maybe you don't get your like $20,000 like space cruiser or whatever just yet. But <laughs> I think right. Fortnite only came out this year. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, Which is like a point of that. So look, the thing with Star Citizen is that I feel like, and I don't really know how this works logistically, but I feel like if they don't come out, it will become a lawsuit. I feel like that game needs to come out where others don't necessarily. I'm not sure if that's the case because obviously like anything that you back on a Kickstarter or whatever, you are backing it as an investor and not a purchaser. So that literally is different. You are not a consumer. You are an investor. Um, so I don't know, but I just, I feel like this one's too big that it has to come out eventually. It's, it just probably won't come out in the form that they want. Yeah. Maybe. That's, that's yeah, a good. I guess it, it depends on who's, who's money, where the money came from. Cause like, there's a lot of private investing, right? True. Yes. They have sought private investment, which seems weird also. Like, why <laughs> would you need that? I, I mean, and, and look, it's obviously got some feature creep issues, but it, it does feel like at least from the outside looking in that these people are just funding a lifestyle almost like they're funding this company to be able to just survive another year and, and make this, this, uh, I, I don't know, this Awful beast nice of a of game. Yeah, it is. That's, nice. so, that's so nice of the backers to you've yeah. kept <laughs> devs employed for eight years. That's I mean, what you've done. We don't get a lot of these Activision can say, we don't get a lot of these stories anymore, but like a lot of Kickstarter stories or failure stories often turn out to like, oh, you gave us all this money, but it's all gone now. And I wouldn't be surprised that eventually if that happened to Star Citizen, they're like, we just spent it all. It's gone. I mean, multiple studios across yeah. the world. They were paying, you know, multiple employees. It's huge. Like uh, settling out of court with Cloud Imperium. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so I don't know. We will see. But in the meantime, let's move on to questions. Uh, we got a bunch. Uh, so I got that, a question. This very exciting. Go for it. Evan, did you get a haircut? I did get a haircut. It looks you good. did. I yeah. noticed. Very it's nice. Very nice. This is the second time on this show I got to show it off because, yeah. Thanks. That, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> because, yeah. Because <laughs> you appear on this show after getting a haircut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, twice yeah. now. Yep. Twice. Two whole times. Yep. Two whole mm-hmm. times. It looks good. Thanks, everyone. So uh, I will say, you and Brian, the style Brian is emerging. very yeah. similar right now. <laughs> Don't, I've be got the with back the sides of the sort of you guys back uh, has gotten out of control. Like, I can't show you the back of mine because I can't see back there. I don't know what it looks like back there. I don't think <laughs> it'd be safe to show it. I just don't feel comfortable getting a haircut yet. I know some yeah, people I have, haven't. but like... I, I cut my own. Oh, yeah, cut my own. Job. I'm fucking trying to, but my stylist is ignoring me. Mm. I get I it though. That's why, I, like, I have this accidental layer here that's too short because I did that. That shouldn't right. be that short. It's this just is, like I have this like poof bit here because be I short. I cut these layers too short, and I'm like, well, just gotta let that grow out. <laughs> right yeah, now, you just gotta, live with you gotta it. just gotta sit with it. My my Hopefully hair was never styled away. to be grown out long, so like, there's mm. a weird tuft in the back because it was initially cut for like a long, going all the way over to the other side, mm. so it, it doesn't part quite right. So I've just been like. I've messaged like two different people to try and fix it, and no one's gotten back to me. I'm like, well, I guess it is a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Mine has never been this long, except for once in 96 when I did the grow the top part out and shave the sides. Oh. Like that, that move. Wow. Very. You did that in 96. All right, Brian. Oh, yeah. Curve, Brian. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that was a very, different curve. 
very <laughs> cool looking. I, did I think, not it, last I think it looks long. great, Brian. I call that really the nice Pidgeotto. Hair. Personally, <laughs> oh, that's it good, is. Yeah. It is kind of, yeah. It pulled it back into like a top knot, basically. Oh yeah. yeah. Damn, Ryan, right? are there pictures? I I don't think one exists. You know, like this was like pre photography, so it sadly I think there's an <laughs> engraving. No, no pictures existed in nineteen thirty six. Yeah, no disposable yeah. Kodaks. No. There's a daguerreotype, I think, somewhere, but uh, we're we're still the looking Civil for War it. portrait of Brian with <laughs> a top. Matthew nine. Brady yeah. took one, but then he went bankrupt, and mm -hmm. that's a long story. Okay, Bummer. got it, got it. <laughs> questions from well, shoot, I lost my questions tab. Though. I was talking about my hair. He talked it's about it's fine. Hit Jack Fenton. Jack Fenton asks. Do you think that VR Rebel will ever be fully adopted by more than just a few AAA studios? Not just tech demos, but full experiences like Half-Life Alex. So yeah, he's he's asking, do, are, are we gonna get more full AAA VR games like Half-Life Alex? Uh, squadrons, right? Yeah. Be squadrons. Yeah. VR. There's also yeah, the Respawn game. Mind. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it still in development uh, though, or is it done? No, I think it's still in development. Um, I don't remember what it's called though, sadly. But no, I, yeah, I think oh. the answer is yes. Yes, we will. Respawn. Yes. Yeah, Insomniac Especially has with this new push. From Insomniac Facebook. has released. Their, I guess they're not like AAA status, but they pushed out like they're a AAA studio and they pushed out like four VR titles. I want to say or AR. Yeah, titles one of their horror games. Uh, I think they maybe did Unspoken as well, which is a spell casting game. I think that might have been Insomniac. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the over the shoulder one where you're you're like in a in a icy caves horror thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, look, there are a number of them. It's just that they don't get a lot of traction or people don't talk about them a lot because the install base yeah. is smaller. So it's not that they don't already exist. Um, but like my favorite VR game is still Kronos, which is made by Gunfire Games, who are actually out in Austin, Texas, who are known for yeah. Darksiders. Um, and they also made um, uh, Revenant from the Ashes, Remnant from the Ashes, oh. um, which I, I also love, which is in the same universe as Kronos. So oh. called, that okay. is Kronos fantastic. Is game. I'm looking now Kronos. that I'm getting into VR. I'm looking for for software that I do want to. Well, get Kronos into. is an Oculus exclusive too, so oh. it, it's Ooh. fantastic. I love it. Um, is it it's a basically no. It's like it's Zelda Dark Souls with a Resident oh. Evil fixed camera. Interesting. Cool. I might have Very good. That. Yeah, I mean, this is like it feels like the install base is about to b like blow up because you know Facebook is definitely eating the cost on these headsets and just getting them into homes. Like they are cheap. Is that, what is it? Three hundred. Quest bucks? Two is three hundred dollars, and it's a higher resolution than the Index. Oh, really? Pretty good. Like, yeah, the re the resolution is like super high. Field of view is not so high, and it doesn't have finger controllers, but. I think that might be more of like a niche kind of enthusiast sort of trait that that headset has. Cause I, I feel like this is about like, this is the first time it feels like it's for uh, like a con an average consumer. People who aren't rich. Like some, yes. People who aren't rich. You don't need yeah. a PC to plug it into. I think that's huge. Um, Definitely, I, I don't know yeah. what that's. Yeah. Uh, it does feel like it, it hasn't been an overnight thing, but this, this seems to be the most traction that VR has ever gotten by far. And they've tried cameras, right? They've tried in the it. past. I mean, VR has been around for a while, but yeah, it's always been just sort of very, uh, niche, but uh, yeah, I, I think, it, I don't think it'll ever grow to where it like takes over, you know, traditional gaming, but who knows? Well, I, maybe I, twist the question. What, what's a triple A developer you would like to see make a VR game? There's a Capcom, a obviously, question. with Resident Evil 7 already, but maybe we could just go around True. real quick. Balls in your court, Jack Fenton. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say Platinum because oh. I love them. And They're what if, great. like... What if they somehow figured out how to put Revengeance into VR and you could do like, you know, the thing in Revengeance where you like slice through people by just like smashing? What if I could just do that, but in VR? I like that very much. Their oh, games seem fair. very suited to VR too. Like, yeah, a Bayonetta I mean, or something like Nia that. I mean, Neo Automata has like oh, themes perfect. that would work with that really well, I think. Like, you know, literally playing as uh, androids, essentially, like is a, is a theme that would work there for sure. I'd love that. Yeah. Any, basically, yeah. Platinum just make yeah. everything. I feel yeah. like Yoko Taro would have some interesting things to to say about VR as a concept too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. you would get get kind of like creative with that. Mm -hmm. I um, honestly would pick Respawn. <laughs> like, I didn't know they were making a game until today for VR, and I, yeah, I love oh, yeah. too. And I like Fall in Order, and I love Apex Legends, and I just love to see what that studio does. Oh, uh, it's I'll it's Medal of Honor. It's a Medal of Honor. No, VR. It's a Medal of oh. Honor game. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm very. They seem like the perfect right up my alley. Although I guess 
No, Arcane. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Oh, true. Okay. Yeah, definitely Arcane. Sometimes you just got to think a about Arcane. Game. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes Dishonored you just got to think. I mean, like, like Dishonored yeah. already has the mm. blink, which could work as a teleportation yep. thing true. in yeah. the headset. Oh my god. A good you, point. Give me more Dishonored. I mean, Always. first of all, but in yes. VR, holy hell, would I take the fuck out of that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would just take oh. the easy way out and say Nintendo, and you just slide your Switch into the headset, like they already, yeah, Labo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Labo, isn't yeah. that a thing? Yeah, but Labo kind of, yeah. It doesn't quite work. There, there's room for improvement there. <laughs> but like, I don't know what Nintendo games other than Zelda I would really want to play in. Oh, it'd VR. be something like, I feel completely like Mario's new. Mario's a bad yeah. idea. They'd have to figure something else out, like the way they do. Donkey you know. Konga. Metroid would nice. be fun in VR. Oh yeah, Metroid. First, yeah. first yeah. person Metroid, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Britt asks, as a gamer, what is the hardest game you've accomplished that left you the most satisfied after it was over? That's a good, I, I feel like we've gotten kind of variations of that, but I, I feel like this is a, a good question. For me, it was the first time I hit Legend in Hearthstone. Just, it took so long and I was so happy at the end that it was just, uh, it's a great feeling. What's the question? Hmm. Is like what was very challenging, but what's the hardest game you've accomplished that left you the most satisfied after it was over? Oh boy! I finished the original uh, Ninja Gaiden on the hardest difficulty. Wow! And I was like really young. Like NES like, Ninja Gaiden? Yeah. Um, oh yeah. What, what year would I have done that? The first. Nineteen ninety six. It came out in eighty eight. Um, oh. Yeah. Apparently, originally. That was yeah, tough. I, yeah. I think I was like maybe like 10 or so when I did that. Um, hopefully I'm remembering correctly because maybe I just finished a level and thought I finished the whole game. But I know <laughs> that I found it very hard and played it like over and over and over and over, and over again. Um, oh. So that one stands out for sure. I used to I, play everything on hard. I get that. Like Super Meat Boy levels just in general always made me feel awesome afterwards. It's not like uh, when I finished Dark Souls yeah. and like Dark Souls 2 and 3, I was just like, okay, great. There's no longer this stressful thing in my life that I have right. to like. I'm not the type of player that like feels accomplished afterward. I'm just like, ugh, I'm so glad that boss is over because now I never have to do it again. Uh, That's how I, I feel. I feel relieved. Yeah, I feel yeah. relieved. I still love those I'm games. A but, but yeah, but I, I, like on the flip side of that, I feel like hard uh, like platformers and stuff generally give me that feeling like Ori games and like again Super Meat Boy just like finishing a really hard level on that you always feel like oh yeah I'm all, like you get that that boost of uh, whatever that emotion is That's feels true, yeah. Celeste was, I Celeste was, I was just like about that to say too, that yeah, yeah. Celeste yeah. was probably a big one for me I gave mm -hmm. up I didn't finish it I know that I should have and just like changed the speed and done all that stuff, but I just gave up. I got real, I real frustrated. Got I got excited about the, the DLC and then mm -hmm. I didn't realize you have to finish other additional levels before you got to that. Oh. I mean, more so, than the B-sides uh, like, or like the K-Bay? So, so like, yeah, whatever get I had all the to, strawberries. Do to get to play yeah. the DLC, I did that and it was fucking hard. And then I got into the new stuff and I was like, Whoa! Fuck this! <laughs> this yeah. is so hard. I was so excited about this, and now I'm not. So yeah, it's brutal. But the base game, the base game, I was able to complete with you know a yeah, fair, fair amount of challenges. But you know, yeah, I did the base game, but didn't get a lot of what were they? The strawberries, and you made a pie at the strawberries, end. Strawberries, sides, grandmas, yeah. mountains, just a lot. Mr. Yoshiro, the classic. I beat that, and yeah. was proud that I could still beat like a hard game like that because yeah, the old school like Ninja. Ninja Gaiden, Battletoads, obviously was like brutal. I, I remember even thinking as a kid, like this is harder than anything else I've ever played. This is like brutal. So, but yeah, Modern Celeste. I, I never finished Super Meat Boy. It was just, it was so damn hard. It's yeah, hard. It's hard. Um, let's do one more. That was a good question. Good, good chatter on that question. Um, mm -hmm. Good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. good question. Mm -hmm. good game, nice good game, job. Good game. Um, what game do you, William has given up. Uh, hope you're doing better, William. What oh. game ha that you loved has aged the worst? The oh. worst. Um, Jet Force Gemini. Uh, oh, I adore that game, but that. if you try to play it now on uh. Nintendo 64, the controls are so bad that it is, <laughs> it is just, just not even fun. So thank God yeah. for Rev Replay, which actually like, initially on launch it was also still really bad and then i updated it so it got a little bit better oh that's preserved cool. that game um yeah. but oh my god it was so 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 bad like trying to play it on on 64 controls 
I think this question was asked last time I was on the podcast. <laughs> I do not remember what I said, but I really enjoyed uh, 2007's Transformers Wii tie-in. Uh, but it was even bad then when I was playing it. But I still mm. like just kind of put a lot of time into it because there's not a lot going on on Wii, and I love Transformers. Right. And then, you know, I'm sure if I looked at it now, I'd be like, oh, no, 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 Connor. <laughs> My sweet child, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> we got to get you an Xbox, you fool. There are certainly games, I don't know. It's hard for me because, like, just... I don't know if people, like, conceptualize this in the same way, but, like, even games we're playing now are eventually going to be considered retro games eventually. So I've yeah. always kind of played games with that in mind, of thinking, like, even from a young age, like, when... I think, like, shortly after I realized that, like, like 3D games were here to stay, like, after that that first initial, um, like, in Nintendo 64 and PlayStation era, I was like, oh, okay, we're going to go into multiple generations of this now. We're going to think of, like, polygonal games the same way that we think of, like, pixel art games eventually. And that's happening now with, like, the resurgence of, like, this PS1 classic style uh, that we see in kind of indie games now. And eventually, I mean, even some games do, like, want to embody, like, that PS2 era. So it's really hard. There's definitely games, I think, that, like, in terms of menus and the way that they work, like, probably don't feel good. Like, I imagine the first, um, is it Dead Rising? Probably that mm -hmm. first system when it was introduced probably doesn't hold up as well anymore now that we have things like Dark Souls and stuff, like iterative gameplay like that, roguelike right, right. style games. I think the older versions probably don't probably don't hold up as well. I know there's there's definitely fans of those older style ones that are like more brutal, but that's probably my answer. I, I feel like for me it was uh GoldenEye sixty four is is quite is has aged quite a bit. A, a lot of that is not yeah. its fault. Um, it's just the passage of time. And I feel that way also about like Final Fantasy VII. Um, I, I will still enjoy playing it. But yeah, those those graphics get uh, are, are pretty old looking. And, and God, when it came out, it was just so cool. Like, holy crap, this looks amazing. So th those are probably my two. Those blocky hands. We were like, whoa, yeah, they're I, oh, I love it. I think it's amazing. <laughs> I like it too. Uh, oh, it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's... The game's it's a bit rapey time. though. Oh, Goldeneye? Well, James Bond. Goldeneye. Final Goldeneye. Fantasy VII. Which they should oh. oh. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Goldeneye too. No. Oh. I was like, I must have Not missed really, that. No. no, all good on that one, I think. <laughs> and on that note, let's wrap it up. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. So I guess in some extent, maybe we're about to get a lot of really bad, like, branded <laughs> PS5. Oh, <laughs> PS5. Most definitely. There were so many yeah. bad 360 ones, you know, I can't yeah. imagine. Uh, I, like, maybe you get a Chex Quest one. I don't know. <laughs> it's just stovetop stuffing branded PS5. <laughs> <A> macaroni. <laughs> Let's work that one. Yeah. <laughs>